Thomas Matthijs project. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. The purpose of Thomas Matthijs speech of this project is for him to work with a group to practice reaching consensus on any topic. The time is 20 minutes, and then there will be a two to three minute closing statement. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, uh, DTM and Vagis. Toastmaster Thomas Matai has been a Toastmaster for eight years and is a member of my speak. On vocal var variety says it will make sure that you do not lose your audience. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Thomas Matai. Wave those COVID-19 patents. Wave those COVID-19 patents, Thomas Matai. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and very welcome guests. First, the news. In the last 16 months, we have received COVID-19, we embraced it, and we suffered from it. And many of us died from it. Thank God that only a minuscule of the population died from this disease, 0.05%. But the people who have not died yet, they have been under house arrest for the last 16 months. I don't have to explain that to you. Now, let me give you the good news. Thanks to the leadership of statesmen, leaders, governments, philanthropic organizations, and research companies, pharmaceutical research companies, we have now developed four vaccines in the Western world and which is being distributed in the free world today. They are from Pfizer, from Moderna, from AstraZeneca, and from Johnson & Johnson. It is worth pointing out that Russia and China developed their version of the vaccines before these four companies produced and marketed in the world. So Russia produced Sputnik IV vaccine and China produced the Sinovac vaccine. So there has been vaccine distributed last year itself in many parts of the world. Now, another good thing happened last year. A global vaccine logistics mechanism called COVAX was established by three agencies coming together, the World Health Organization, the Global Vaccine Alliance, and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. And what was its aim? Fantastic. To vaccinate all high-risk people and health workers in every single nation, rich and poor equally, in 2021. What a noble objective. But let's see what happened when the vaccines were approved for public use in January of this year. Well, you will be surprised. It's another story. Around 30 rich influential nations bypassed this COVAX mechanism and grabbed whatever they could from the producers themselves. Meaning COVAX didn't get enough vaccine to deliver to the poor countries. If that is not enough, ladies and gentlemen, these rich nations are now moving ahead with vaccinating their low-risk citizens ahead of health workers and high-risk people of the poor countries. Let me share a graph with you so that you will understand what will, what is happening. You can see in this graph, we are depicting some poor countries and some rich countries. Now where they had influence and they could grab, they have vaccinated or succeeded in vaccinating about 50 to 60% of the population. And you can see the names, Canada, UK, USA, Israel. Now, 
this has its own benefits. The benefit is that there's a sense of confidence in these countries that, you know, the disease is under control, we have tamed it. To give you an example, in Israel, where 60% of the population has been vaccinated, there are no more COVID restrictions. Their beaches are open, restaurants are open, business is open, you don't have to wear a mask, you don't have to socially distance. Only thing is that if you want to get into a train or into a, into a flight, they will tell you, have you been vaccinated? which is an indirect push for the entire population to get vaccinated. I hope you all know that there is something called herd immunity, that if you can get two out of three people inoculated or vaccinated, then you have almost tamed the disease. What is the story on the other side? That is a pity. Since the poor countries did not get enough vaccine, their vaccination attempts has been below par. The case has spread so much, and now things are out of control. Now, let me share another graph to tell you what is happening. This is the story of last week. You can see places like Argentina, France, Sweden, Turkey, Mongolia, which are in the almost the, the bright red, they have 80 cases per 100,000 people in their country. So 100,000 of the population, out of them 80 new cases every day. India had gone through the mill a couple of weeks ago. Now it is about 70 cases uh, per 100,000 population in that country. What I'm trying to tell you is very simple. In the low and middle income countries, vaccination has been very poor. The, the allocation of uh, vaccines have been very poor and therefore the pandemic is raging very badly there and that is a pity. It didn't have to be this way. We have multiple safe and highly effective vaccines that should be deployed worldwide to end the pandemic. pandemic. Yet, only 3% of the total doses manufactured have gone to the low-income countries. How can we embrace this sad reality with equanimity? Long story short, COVAX failed. What is needed to facilitate some equity in vac vaccine availability and accessibility is to have a sustainable way for the low and middle income countries to produce vaccines in their own country. Not in every country, but in at least you know, in some countries in different continents. And by that we can ensure that there will be vaccine distribution all over the world and different countries will not be going through the cycle of variants coming back and getting into a big mess as that has happened in India recently. And for that, we need a new approach and a new vaccine, so to speak. It is called people's vaccine. Now, people's vaccine is not a new vaccine. Let me explain what that means. The people's vaccine campaign argues that pharmaceutical corporations must allow the COVID-19 vaccines to be produced as widely as possible by sharing their knowledge free from the patent rights. Yes, we need to take the patent rights away for the time being. And these MNCs, Pfizer and Moderna and, and Johnson and & Johnson, AstraZeneca, should be giving these vaccine rights free to other producers in these low-income countries or the mid the middle income countries so that they can set up vaccine production lines there and thus meet the demand in the whole world. A patent waiver would allow other producers to step up and make raw materials and export for all the current vaccines. And that will be a good thing for us to do right now. Now, this has created a commotion in the world industry, uh, in the world industry, especially the pharmaceutical industry. 
but i want to congratulate the biden administration who supported the waiver after an initial hesitation now other countries have followed suit for example france germany uh, france uh, italy uh, greece uh, uk they have joined suit in uh, demanding that the patent rights can be waived however two countries in europe uh, germany and switzerland have opposed it now the philanthropic organization like gates foundation who was against uh, giving patents free or removing the patent rights now have reverse course and agree that you know we should do something like this now this is the right time you know we need to push for the patent rights to be waived and we need to get going soon on people's vaccine because there are two things we have to remember we need to have facilities uh, made in the low income countries to manufacture vaccine and we need to get uh, the financial support necessary for making new factory lines or retrofitting existing factory lines in these countries i'm talking about vaccine production in south america i'm talking about vaccine production in africa i am talking about a vaccine production in asia like countries like indonesia or malaysia or pakistan and things like that so that there will be vaccine available everywhere and there will be a, a chance for equitable distribution for that so my proposal is very simple one end the vaccine the vaccine patent rights right now and let the leaders come together and make a strategy for uh, promoting production in the second and third world countries the sooner we start the faster we bring an end to this pandemic and the first thing is of course patents waiver and once the waiver is approved expertise mobilization know how transfer financial uh, mobilization to build or retrofit existing factories in the low income countries and the movement of uh, raw materials to that place production and distribution etc will happen and it will make sense so this is the humanitarian cause right now which we need to support we should act on it right now and action must start now so let us unite and demand waive those covid-19 patents right now i have a second part as a part of my speech which is to involve the audience and i have asked my uh, mentor team to join me in suggesting with their opinions or their feedback to my proposal and i want to hear from esli filisor linda and anish lad so first esli how do you react to my proposal what do you think and thank you thank you thomas for your for your speech and and i think i i disagree with your with your proposal i think the pharmaceutical companies have spent years in researching and developing such a vaccine and giving them patent rights it's a way to give them a return on their investment so how can that be given free to others and i believe once you remove the privilege of the patents you are taking away the incentive to research and produce thank okay. you thank you i think kesli you made a good point that uh, these uh, pharmaceutical companies have invested so much time and energy and money in producing these uh, uh, technologies to fruition so we need to compensate them yes i agree however you know about that uh they have already made their money in 2021 we have about 2 billion vaccines made and if you really know the cost of them 20 dollars per vaccine they have minted money now i am not saying that they don't deserve any more money but yes it's a good point but you have to look at the the calamity that has happened you know the world over people are dying and suffering and so we need to have some way of you know getting over this harm right now so we will uh, we will talk about that but we have to understand the need is more important than saving the pharmaceutical industry 
not saving but giving them more money for more reward for their work right now any other comments from uh, linda yes linda yes thank you this is not a revenue issue this is not a financial issue this is a moral issue. I don't know about where you live, but where I live, pharmaceutical companies are doing just fine financially. And I don't think it's until we start looking the, at this as a humanitarian issue that we're going to come to agreement on it. We can't, this, if we're going to reach global equanimity again ever, then we need to start reaching equity in distribution of this vaccine and forget about the money. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good point. Uh, we need to understand the importance of the moment and agree with this proposal. Can I have uh, comments from Anish? So, um, yeah, thank you so much for your speech, Thomas. Um, on your point, even though I do agree that it would help with the mass production and vaccination of the world population. I believe that we should proceed with caution. The reason is that patent rights are a privilege and they provide security for research companies to stay in business. If they are waived, that could be the end of our R&D. Even with protected patent rights nowadays, some countries still steal technology and improvise it and make it their own. But without these pan rights, it would be a free fall with even worse consequences. And the rights, if rights are waived without any proper thoughts, then it could be a disaster. So I believe it should be a case by case assessment about which patent should be waived and why. And there should be a compelling reason for that. Thank you. Thank you. I think Anish, you made a good point there that uh, we cannot simply throw the patent rights away because that will uh, have two impacts. One, uh, there won't be any incentive for these companies to produce anything new. And then uh, the other one is, um, any Tom, Dick and Harry can manufacture anything and that will be a big uh, trouble for the future. Yes, I agree. But however, how do we modify this for the moment? That's the question. Maybe only for this uh, COVID-19, uh, we need to I take away the patent rights right now, not for everything else. Uh, because COVID-19 is a global pandemic affecting every country and every nation and every tribe and every people. So uh, I would propose that let's end the COVID-19 vaccine uh, patents only right now so that we can mobilize uh, and help uh, these low-income countries you know, produce these vaccines in their own country and take it away to help them to manage the right now. Thank you for your uh, input. And that ends my official presentation. But now I'll be taking a couple of minutes to talk to you about you know, my experience of uh, facilitating this discussion and reaching a consensus. First of all, do we have a consensus that we need to end the COVID-19 patent right now? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anybody opposing? Yeah, we have a consensus. Thank you. Thank you. Now, fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. I must say this has been a very um, challenging experience for me because uh, this involves the entire humanity. This involves people from the developed and the developing and underdeveloped nations. This is a disease spreading all over the world. Where we travel, we take the disease. And that's why the rich nations suffered first, and now the poor nations are catching up slowly. Now, my point is very simple. My experience of sharing this with you was fantastic. For me, it was a personal uh, research and uh, understanding the depth of the problem, why we have good intentions, but we fail, like why COVAX failed last year, or this year, and now we have to think of a new mechanism to get these vaccines across the whole world and the whole population. So I really appreciate having this opportunity to discuss this with you. And uh, I, I thank you for your cooperation today. And I will hand the meeting back to uh, the Toastmaster of the day. 
Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Thomas Matai, for taking us through some learning where you showed us on a balance how difficult it is and how governments globally go through the debates and the thinking. And you brought this here in the discussion in this Toastmaster Club meeting. 